Green's an independent journalist and the author of The Palestine Laboratory, a book on Israel's arms and surveillance industry. He's in Sydney and joins us live from there. So, first of all, Anthony, how is the conflict in Gaza being used to develop Israeli cy what's called cyber offensive technology in the industry? What's been happening in the last two months in some ways really continues what Israel has been doing for years, which is Gaza is a key testing ground, as you said, for new weapons, sometimes deadly, sometimes also just surveillance. So what we've seen in the last two months is really a huge amounts of new technology, new particular drones, quadcopters, so to speak, which kind of have been firing apparently weapons uh, into Palestinian areas, including civilian areas, and AI-driven warfare. Now, there's been a lot of talk and hype around AI warfare. Israel started doing this in 2014. They did it again in 2021 in other rounds of their conflicts with Hamas. And this year it's really accelerated to the point where both people I'm speaking to and there was an amazing report in the Israeli outlet 972 a few weeks ago, which outlined the fact that really any serious rules of engagement about worrying about civilian casualties has essentially been removed. And the impact of that was that the AI system was processing huge amounts of information and spitting out massive amounts of targets. Those targets often would deliberately be known to contain civilians if they were hit. And we've seen the rate of civilian casualties is really unprecedented in the modern age. And what Israel's doing by using this technology is obviously in its war against Hamas. It's being used to try to impress Israeli audiences and also internationals to try to get support for Israel's brutal war in Gaza, but it's also for foreign buyers. Now, Israel's not doing it solely for that reason, of course, but as we've seen in the last year since the document in my book, a key aspect of Israel's war making is to basically test new weapons in Gaza or the West Bank and then sell them to various um, countries afterwards. So almost certainly, as I note in The Guardian, there was a follow-up story to that Israeli report last week which said that a US official was quoted as saying, the world is watching. Countries are watching what Israel is doing. And what he didn't say, but should have, is that they want to also have a piece of their technology when this conflict is over. Anthony, are we seeing the Israeli cyber industry pivoting more and developing more towards AI and data analysis after the scandals involving hacking firms and spy software such as Pegasus? The short answer is yes and no. Let me briefly explain. Um, Pegasus obviously was a notorious spyware firm, which does still exist. It's NSO Group is the company, although it's in financial trouble. But what's happened in the last years is NSO's star has decided has fallen. Many other Israeli companies are doing remarkably similar things. So essentially technology which allows a country, intelligence outfit or police force to spy on your phone, whether it's an Android or iPhone. So the technology is very much still being used and sold by large numbers of Israeli companies. But there's no doubt there was a recent um, Europe's largest national security fair in Paris a few weeks ago, and Israel had a lot of companies there, even though there's, of course, a war going on in Gaza. And a lot of those companies were selling not particularly offensive cyber, such as Pegasus, but surveillance technology to be able to monitor various amounts of people's phones, social media, and interestingly, a company called Toka, T-O-K-A, which is essentially a company that allows a buyer to change video feeds. So you can imagine a institution or government has a video feed of some particular incident. This allows, this technology allows that feed to be changed, to be altered, which is a remarkably dangerous and powerful tool. So Israel is clearly getting in on this. And it's important to note that many of the technologies that Israel is selling, the architects and veterans are coming from the IDF, the Israeli military, and they're getting the experience firstly when they work for the military, working under the occupation to try to surveil Palestinians. They take that experience into the private sector while maintaining close ties with the state. So yes, these are private companies in name, but in fact, as I showed in detail in the book, they're actually an extension of the state because the Israeli government uses these companies as a way to promote its agenda. All right, thank you so much. Anthony Lowenstein there. Thank you.